Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our strategy webinar for this year's Give It Education. Um, we're just going to give it a couple more seconds for more people to get uh, in, settled, and then we'll get started in a minute. Alrighty, so we have a lot of just great content for you all today as far as strategy and tips so you can have a successful campaign. Um, so we'll get started. Real quick, our webinar is being recorded. It'll be posted in the fundraising toolkit um, on the Give Education website under resources. So if you have any questions or anything during the webinar, um, you can also click the Q&A button and you can send those over to us. Um, we have Carrie and Josh joining us today. Uh, Carrie with Alumni Nations and Josh with the Central High School Foundation. So um, I will pass it over to Carrie and Josh to say hello. Hi everyone, this is Carrie with Alumni Nations. I just wanted to say thank you so much for attending the call today. And we are looking forward to a very successful Give Education Day and uh, looking forward to assisting you in any way that we can to make sure that you have a successful day. Um, if you have any other schools or friends or anyone that you think could benefit from this, it isn't too late for them to register. And I want to really impart, and I know Sarah will touch base on this, it's really just not even too late to implement a successful marketing strategy to really help raise and uh, raise the funds that you're looking for and achieve your financial goals. So we're very excited that you're a part of it. Thank you for taking the time uh, to be here today with us. Hi, everyone. My name is Josh. I'm the creative director and database administrator for the Omaha Central High School Foundation. And I believe this is my seventh day of giving. Hard to keep track at this point, but if you have any questions or any uh, things as you go along, uh, we'll be checking the chat. So looking forward to hearing what Sarah has to say for us today. Awesome, sounds good. So here is kind of a short look at the agenda, um, just kind of an overview. We're gonna talk through a bunch of strategies you can use to help make your campaign a success. Um, and then of course, we'll do a Q&A at the end so you can always send over questions during the presentation. Um, so four areas uh, that we're pretty much going to hit on uh, will be talking about goals, matching grants, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and then marketing strategies. Uh, before we get too deep into that, Carrie, if you want to go over just kind of the big picture overview, early giving is starting next week. Um, so I'll let you cover that one. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. So Give Education Day, as you all know, is going to be held on March 1st. Right now, um, we are anticipating a very successful day, a successful event. This is our uh, third year and the event continues to grow. Uh, the schools and organizations that are participating um, will start with their early giving on February 8th, which means, hey, we're doing the event on March 1st, but go ahead and feel free to donate now if you so would like. Um, I noticed a couple of organizations uh, that have partnered up with Give Education Day have already started fundraising for, or, or sorry, are planning on really launching on February 8th for a couple of very key specific programs that they're working on, such as a trivia night, um, raising money for something like that or bowling night, et cetera. So it's really up to the organizations to like, in terms of what you want to raise money for and using this platform to, to help. And so we're looking forward to it. Um, all schools, public, private, and foundations and parent groups and booster groups. And if you have any type of uh, educational organization that benefits education, we would love to have them to participate in Give Education Day. If you can have, we, we have this dream of a, a nationwide Give Education Day focused on raising funds for anything that has to do with education. And we encourage you to invite others to participate as well. Uh, minimum donations are twelve or $10. Uh, I, though having said that, I've never seen anyone really only donate $10. I feel like the minimum donations are always upwards of like $25 to $35. But nonetheless, the minimum donation is $10. And you do need to register uh, your organization. But again, if those of you on the call can please help spread the word, we'd love to uh, see even more schools participate and we'll, we'll be back stronger and even better in 2024 as well. 
Um, alrighty, so campaign strategies, like I said, we're going to be going over kind of four different areas. Um, but to begin with, I always like to talk about just the great resources that are available to you on the Give Education website. And this is found in the fundraising toolkit. Um, so of course, it's filled with, if you've been here before, you know, it's filled with kind of our tips, tricks, our FAQs, our walkthroughs, and just a bunch of different key support articles that we think would be most helpful for you all. Um, as well as kind of tips for email and social media to get you inspired and help you kind of start brainstorming uh, how to kind of figure out how you want to promote your campaign. So this is going to be kind of a first place stop where you're preparing um, and just be sure to visit back. You can check the FAQs whenever you need to as well. Um, all right, so Sarah, since, can I, yeah. Sarah, I apologize. This is Carrie. Can I interrupt for a second? Can you go back to that mm -hmm. last slide? So I had, this past weekend, I went on our website and I downloaded all of the email templates that are available to us through the um, planning guide and the checklist and the getting ready and steps for some fundraising success, which we have these templates that Sarah alluded to. I was able to download them into a Word document and it took me probably 25 minutes to 30 minutes to kind of rearrange the wording the way I wanted to rearrange them. Um, and then I literally walked away from that time with six email templates and dates that I had decided I wanted to send the emails out to our to our uh, alumni and, and, and engage our community. And, and it really only took 30 minutes. And so I really encourage you, um, if you have a chance, and, and Sarah, thank you for setting this up and helping us with this. These templates are, are legit. You just have to download them and spend about 25 minutes. And then you literally, all you have to do is copy and paste. And at least at a minimum, you have your email campaign and your social media campaigns done and ready to go. So I just wanted to point that out. I think sometimes this area and the checklist and the planning guide can be overlooked, um, but don't overlook it because there's a lot of really great tools in there. And I just firsthand knowledge of it this weekend when I worked on it. Thanks, That's Sarah. Awesome. Um, okay, so setting goals. The first thing we're going to talk about, um, since Give Education is a 24-hour event, the trick to really making the most out of your campaign and how to sustain your fundraising momentum is going to be, you know, of course, setting your goals. Um, one way to really kind of help, you know, generate the buzz and build excitement throughout the day is to also set mini goals. Um, but like I said, before you are, you know, setting any mini goals, and we'll talk more about that in a second about why you want to do that. Um, but first, you want to figure out just at the core of why you're participating, like what are your overarching goals for your campaign? So setting clear goals for your organization is going to be your first stop when you're really getting ready for Give Education. Um, if you've been participating in the past, maybe you are at the point where you're going through the motions. Um, you want to start to just kind of revisit why you're participating. What do you want to achieve by participating? Um, have you set your monetary, your non-monetary goals? You definitely want to raise money on the giving day, uh, but also we always encourage you to consider non-monetary goals as well. So some non-monetary goal examples would be like a certain number of maybe new donors or unique donors. Um, perhaps this year, you know, is the year that you're going to really start to tackle peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and you want to, you know, send out emails and try to motivate people as how they can be an ambassador for your organization. Um, maybe you have a non-monetary goal where you want to reach out and re-engage donors who have not given in a while, um, or just reach out and try to secure new matches or figure out how to get sponsors involved this year. So those are some other goals outside of monetary um, that you can start to kind of build on. So once you have a clear kind of attainable overarching goal for this year, you can start to really break down each of your goals into what we call mini goals. Um, so your mini goals, they're going to help you sustain your fundraising momentum and get your donors and your supporters excited about helping you reach the larger goals that you've set. So think about your overall goals, what you need to raise, and then break that out over the giving period or the 24 hour giving day into kind of bite size attainable pieces. This also is going to help your donors understand what you need from them when during the day. So instead of saying like, we need a hundred donations, that's one of our goals, um, that can be overwhelming and that's big picture for you and it can be intimidating to donors. So you can break it down into many bite-sized pieces by you know the end of the morning, we hope to have 25 donors spread the word, post on your social media. We wanna get 25 uh, by morning and then maybe by lunchtime, we want another 25. And then before you know it, the end of the day, you've reached your hundred donor goal. 
Um, so also keep in mind when you have the most activity to your site, maybe you have, you know, the highest activity in the morning and then by dinner time, things are slowing down. Consider when you have active hours. Uh, if you have a quieter period, um, you can start to think about how to kind of boost your campaign during quiet periods. And we always recommend matching grants, um, which we are going to get into now. Um, so matching grants, they're a really great solid strategy for diving, driving donations during the giving day for your campaign. So at its most basic, a matching grant is just a really large or possibly smaller donation that your organization uses to bring in other smaller donations. So a lot of people think that matches need to be, you know, $2,000, $1,000. Uh, we don't always re like require, I mean, obviously we don't require, but we don't always urge for large gifts to be matches. Um, we've seen success with people who even offer up to $100 as a match. Um, when you, you know, have any amount that can be matched, it's very helpful. So don't think that your match needs to be uh, really big. Um, it can be, you know, something smaller as well. Um, so once you have decided uh, about your match, you want to pretty much start thinking about who is going to be the giver for your match. Um, hold on one second. Um, so people that we like to consider for kind of major gifts, uh, people who have donated to you in the past, in the past, like as a large donor are really good kind of people, prospective people to reach out to. Um, if they provided a match, you know they're going to provide you $1,000 instead of having them just, you know, make their donation this campaign. And, you know, every year they donate maybe $1,000, you could instead ask them if they'd be willing to offer their donation as a match this year. Uh, you can explain to them what that means, basically get them excited about it. It means that their donation is going to be offered up, you know, maybe in a one-to-one -one match where, um, excuse me, someone donates, you know, $100 and it's matched by $100. Um, these are super enticing to donors, so you can always emphasize that this is a big motivator for other people to give when there is a match that's live during your event. Uh, it really just helps drum up excitement. Um, so like I said, since a matching grant is really just a large donation, you'll follow the same process as securing the maybe, you know, other major gifts. So you'll prospect, you'll cultivate, you'll ask people. Um, consider asking, you know, any leaders in your organization or your school, maybe you have um, a very involved parent or an alumni or, you know, a board member who would be happy to provide a matching gift. Um, but another thing you can consider uh, is asking a group of people who uh, care about your organization to provide the match as a group. So maybe each person can donate $100, you have 10 people, you're up to a $1,000 match. Um, so a lot of different routes that you can take as far as matches, of course, also corporate sponsors, if you're able to, you know, talk to local businesses or people in the community. Um, that's a good fun way where you can get kind of outreach into the community get them involved in a public way. They're usually excited. It draws attention to their philanthropy. So you can kind of start, you know, putting together possibilities, who you should reach out to. Um, sending emails, putting out feelers, maybe phone calls, maybe you just show up to the business and you have some materials, um, stuff like that. So you still have lots of time to secure a match for the giving day. Uh, and of course, you remember, it does not have to be a huge amount of money. You can have, you know, $200 be offered up as a, as a match. Um, I don't know, Josh, if you want to add anything to this or else I'll get into setting up the match. Yeah, I would just say that one of the cool things that um, the platform allows you to do is that you can make the matching gift name anonymous. So like if there's somebody who wants to contribute a matching gift for the, for the giving day, but isn't comfortable putting their name out in public on it, it, it still allows you to display that matching gift on the platform without putting their name up on display. So it, it's just a great way. Giving is kind of a contagious thing. When you see other people that are involved with the giving day, I think it encourages other people to want to participate and join in on the fun. Yeah, that's very true. Um, yes, yeah, so when you're setting up the match, I kind of have an example here, like Josh was saying, um, the name of the match sponsor can be totally anonymous, uh, but there's just a lot of flexibility here with start times, end times, you can queue matches to set one after another. 
um, there's just a ton of kind of different options here. So I encourage you to just take a minute. Maybe you're brand new to matches. Maybe you're just not totally sure about like what features we have available. So just click around um, and kind of see what's available. It's fun to also share a little bit of this. Uh, it depends completely on who is your, you know, providing the match. Maybe you don't want them to be incredibly involved in the settings, but sometimes it can be fun depending on who, you know, your grantor is and show them like we could do a one-to-one -one match. We could, you know, set a limit. We could do a two-to-one match. Uh, depending on who it is, it could be a fun little way to get them just more involved in kind of the impact that they're having on your event. Um, and then at the end of the day, a matching grant, it's a big marketing tool for you. So in order to make the most out of the matching grant, you're going to want to figure out how to promote it. So on Many Cause for giving, Give Education, we just have a bunch of kind of built in marketing tools. Um, we put a sticker. There's kind of a little example here. We put a sticker on your donate button when your match is live. Uh, there's some changes to your checkout process. The match is going to be listed uh, on your organization page itself. Um, and as you're promoting your match, you'll definitely want to figure out how you're going to incorporate, you know, the excitement in your social media. If it's a big match, promote it on your social media channels as soon as it goes live. Send out, you know, periodic emails. Let everyone know how much of the match is left. Maybe half of your match is remaining and there is a half an hour to go. Uh, this kind of countdown is going to create really just a nice sense of urgency and hopefully help other people see, oh my gosh, if I donate now, I'm going to, you know, double my donation. That kind of buy one, get one excitement really goes pretty far. Um, and of course, it's a nice talking point during the day. So if you're looking for how to keep people engaged, little updates on your match, on how you're doing, on how your mini goals are going, on how your overall goals are going, are going to go really far for you. Uh, we're going to get into peer-to-peer -peer fundraising next. There is a lot of content here. Um, very exciting. There's just so much capability with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Uh, so ambassadors are people who are in your organization's circle who can help boost your campaign. So this basically includes, you know, your close allies, your board members, your volunteers, your alumni, your, you know, your parents, whoever's really involved and engaged, staff members, and so on. Um, utilizing your ambassadors, the big, the big kind of overarching thing is that these people are going to have connections to other people that you don't necessarily have connections to. So they're basically helping you reach, you know, expand your net, reach more people, get access to other people um, that you might not have access to right now. Uh, so in the simplest way an ambassador can help you is by just sharing a link to your page with, you know, their social circle. Maybe they add it to their stories on Instagram or they add it to their Facebook link. So they're just sharing a link to your campaign to help you. Um, if you have, you know, somebody who's like more interested in peer to peer fundraising, maybe they're more tech savvy, tech savvy. These ambassadors would be really good for actually creating peer to peer fundraiser pages for you. Um, so your peer to peer fundraising, it's like I said, basically, it's a technique you're asking your supporters to help fundraise on your behalf. So they're creating a, a page for you uh, that's directly linked to your organization. So all funds they raise directly go into your uh, piggy bank. Um, so we have the platform set up so it's just super easy for you to take advantage of peer to peer fundraising. I have little arrows. It's like a three button process pretty much fundraise, get started, create your fundraiser. Um, uh, so it's just really easy to use. Um, if you do have questions, you can always let us know. But we always find that organizations that use peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, they always tend to raise more money during events uh, because they have those extra arms out there, you know, reaching out to people. Um, to help make things even easier for your peer-to-peer -peer supporters, your ambassadors, we always encourage you to set up a fundraising template. Super easy. Again, you can set it up right through your organization page. You can pre-fill you know, their fundraising page with a logo, with your images, maybe a, a text block that explains who you are, what you do. Um, and you can also set goals for them, like maybe you want to add, you know, $100 or $500 goal for each of them. They can always adjust these settings, but being able to click a button to start creating and seeing that half the page is already filled out, that's going to, you know, take a lot of work off their plate so that they can focus on sharing and spreading the word and sharing their page link to help get you more donations. Um, 
And I mean, it might sound like a big ask. It's really a fun way for the right person to engage. So if you have really big supporters, if you have people who are, you know, very social, these are a great kind of bunch to send an email to, send them a link to your page, show them how, you know, use these screenshots on this slide. If you want, you can download these after the uh, presentation and add this kind of to your email. Just make it super easy for them. We always find that, uh, like I said, organizations that utilize peer-to-peer -peer always raise more. Um, and let's see, the next level. So if you have previously dabbled with peer-to-peer, -peer, you're ready for something more, or maybe you just have a lot of interest in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Maybe you have you know, a group of people who's very motivated uh, and they want to kind of put something together as a team. We do have team fundraising. Um, this is good for, you know, companies even. So if you have like um, someone who works at a company and they want to try to motivate to help you, they can create a, co a company team or a volunteer group team. Um, really, it just, we also have events. So I don't want to overwhelm with the amount of information I'm giving you right now, but Teams are basically, like this one is showing, are a bunch of fundraisers, individual fundraisers, all looped together, working for towards the same cause. If you wanted to go even bigger, you could do an event um, which has multiple teams. So maybe you have 12th grade, uh, whatever, you know, however you kind of divvy it up, those would all be fundraising under like a larger scale event. Um, if you do have questions, you can reach out to our support and we can kind of walk you through uh, and even provide you kind of a demo of what that looks like if that's something that you want to kind of do next level. Um, but yeah, really, really exciting stuff. A lot of cool features, a lot of uh, templates, making it easy for people who are going to help you and support you. Um, let us know you have any questions. I'm going to move into marketing strategy. Um, which basically is going to cover email and social media. Um, email, is, there's a lot that goes into email, so I've kind of divvied it up into different kind of sections. Uh, but basically, we all know your email list is going to be one of your most important tools during Give Education. Uh, like Carrie was saying, we have just excellent templates. We've tried to do, you know, a lot of the legwork as far as like drafting templates for your emails, so check those out. Um, you know, take a little time to kind of customize it to specifically what you want it to say. But this is a direct line to your supporters. Um, so we're going to talk about the most basic strategy and then how to take it to another level. Um, one thing, regardless of what you do with email, is to pay kind of close attention to the timing of your emails. Um, when are people most active? When do you have matches going live? When do you need communications to go out that make the most sense? Um, you definitely want to send an email in the morning as soon as, you know, everyone's waking up and starting to move around. Uh, maybe you also want to send one midday as an update. How is your mini goal going? How are your progress? How are your stats looking? Have you won any prizes? That type of thing. Um, and then you'll probably definitely want to send one later in the evening. Um, there's a nice, you know, you don't want to overwhelm with emails, you want them to be strategic. So definitely take some time, sit down, pre-schedule when you think it would be the most, you know, necessary to send an email. Um, so at the most basic level, you want to, of course, keep emails relatively short, simple, and super skimmable with a bold call to action, something like donate now. <laughs> Um, we always kind of suggest a button instead of hyperlinked text. Buttons are more, you know, grabby. We all are more likely to click, click a button rather than just a kind of hyperlinked text. Uh, most people are reading their email on their phones these days, so they have very limited time. Just like you and I, we open our phones, we want to skim through our email, get to the point, do the thing that's, you know, the call to action. Um, so make sure everything, every email you're sending is kind of mobile friendly. Uh, send yourself a test, send somebody on your team a test, let them click the buttons, make sure the buttons work. Um, little things like that, basic level, clean, you know, good emails. Um, taking it to the next level, uh, we suggest segmenting your email list. People are so much more likely to read an email that is written for them. So segment your list, figure out the best way to sort your kind of 
key groups. So maybe you have donors who uh, have given last year, donors who give once a year, maybe you have donors who are very active with you, um, and then maybe you have a group that's like, you know, affiliated with your organization in some way, whether it's staff or volunteers or your alumni. Um, so you don't need to craft entirely new emails for each of these audiences, but you'll want to switch around kind of the key message, maybe the ask, maybe the call to action is slightly different. Um, just little tweaks that make it so that you are talking to the person that you want to read the email. Um, my example is usually if you're sending an email uh, asking for a donation to a volunteer, um, you're going to want to recognize what they do for you before you know you just say give us some money um you want to recognize that they do a service for you and that you are appreciative and then here's another way they can help also if they can't help offer them an alternative maybe that's you know a segment um that you specifically include for that list um and then the other example if you have a major gift donor you don't want to send them kind of a, a general blast saying hey the campaign is on send us a ten dollar minimum donation that wouldn't be a message that you would want to send to a major gift donor they would expect something probably a little different um so definitely identify key segments as kind of the middle level of an email strategy figure out how to tailor your message to that group um and then uh, into the kind of the highest level of strategy, uh, we recommend A-B testing. This gets a little more complicated. Um, this is mostly about, you know, sending emails and testing like subject lines or testing, uh, you know, two batches of emails, one that has a blue button that says donate, the second one that has like, you know, a green button or a red button, little things like that might not seem like that important but if you have the time you can find out a lot of information as far as like who how many people are clicking based on slight variations and differences you can this is even something that you can work on kind of throughout the year um is just like sending two emails with something slightly different maybe you add emojis to a subject line maybe that grabs people more than one that doesn't have that um, little details like this can really elevate your marketing strategy. Um, you can learn more about your audience, see what they like to click on, and then you have, you know, the strongest email with the data backing it um, so that you can have a good email uh, during the giving day. Um, and then finally, as always, like I said, CTAs, your call to actions should always be super clear, super action oriented, um, and just telling them to do something now, give, donate, donate now, uh, kind of bold, simple, clear ask are gonna get people to do something um, rather than saying, please consider donating today. Um, so moving into, I also, as part of your email strategy, I wanna touch on retention reports. So this is a nice little tool available um, and it's going to be particularly helpful to those who, of course, have previously participated in Give Education. Um, so this section allows you to export a list of unretained donors. Um, so you can see who has previously donated to a Give Education campaign for you and have they redonated, have they not. So you can download that list. You can filter by last year's event, download the list. Um, and then put together an email specifically for those people, letting them know, hey, you gave to our campaign last year. Our campaign is currently live. Uh, donate now. Um, and then for social media strategy, we always recommend going where you have the most impact. So if you have kind of different social media outlets, Facebook, maybe you're on Instagram, uh, possibly you do TikTok, who knows? Um, wherever you have the most followers, the most activity, go there, spend your time there. Obviously, social media just takes a ton of time um, and we know how much time it takes. So put your efforts in the platform where you're most likely to reach the most people and have the greatest impact. Um, again, just like email, a lot of the strategy is going to come back to pre-scheduling. Um, do as much as you can now before the event starts so that you can sit back and focus on posts that are more time sensitive. So maybe you want a prize. Um, there are certain posts that you'll want to post, you know, and create the day of when it happens. Um, and then there's certain posts that you can definitely pre-schedule or even pre-design 
uh, maybe you have mini goals and you know each like quarter of the day you want to do a post so all you have to do if you pre-schedule if you pre-create your post now using canva or another free kind of design uh, app um, you, all you have to do the day of is drop in the statistics drop in how many donors you're away from your goal um, so pre-design and pre-schedule as much as you can to save yourself the headache during the day of maybe you think donors um, maybe you have won a prize, you want to do a public prize announcement. Um, those are things that you can pre-design so you can just drop in the text, drop in the numbers, um, and just make everything easy for yourself. Um, if possible, you can also Sarah, budget. Can I interrupt? Yeah, yeah go Sarah, for it. Can I interrupt for a second? Um, and apologize, everyone. Sarah doesn't know that I was going to interrupt and, and, and take over <laughs> pieces of, of the meeting. But when she was talking about dropping in, uh, you know, graphics and, and that type of thing, we have created, and Sarah, if, if it's okay with you to share my screen, is that all right? We've created yeah. a Canva template that we're happy to email to you that, you know, all you have to do is fill in your pictures and your information. But if you put a note in the chat and would like me to send this over to you, we can. But we... Um, used a uh, let's see here let me share my screen we used i'll use this organization as as, a, as, a, as as an example this is a template we created let me know when you can see my screen we got it this is a template we created out of canva and we made it like i have this set up generically so i'm happy to email you the link where they put in their pictures a little bit about themselves, that Give Education Day is coming up. Now they're going to plan on emailing this and also doing a, a they're mailing it to some of their individuals as well through via uh, direct mail. But we also put together a QR code that links back to the organization's, um, their uh, Give Education Day, as well as uh, we shortened the URL just so that if anyone's afraid to scan a QR code, they can type that in and it'll take them right to their Give Education fundraising page. Um, but my point is we have this in blank form uh, that you can customize to whatever you would like. So if that's something you're interested in so that you don't have to do the work, please let me know. Um, we'll email it to you. Uh, it's just a link and you can go in and, and do your thing and, and you have it built. We're trying to make this as easy for you as possible. Um, and I know that Sarah has, you know, your feedback is so great in terms of how to, the email campaigns and, and who to filter it out to and that type of thing. I think even at a minimum, if you know a school were to print off a flyer like this, just at a minimum, just that's to pretend that's all they could do, is print off a flyer like this with a QR code and a URL, um, you'll get hopefully some bites depending on where your fundraising, can, you know, where you, what your fundraising goals are. So we have that available to you. If it's something you're interested in, please let me know and we'll get a copy of it over to you. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, that's a great template. Um, so the last tip for um, social media before I do my like, my recap of social media. Uh, if you have the ability, budget a little money and boost some of your social posts. You know, um, maybe you're posting now. I always say, like, now is the best time to start. So if you are not posting regularly, start posting, boost some of your posts. Um, you can kind of decide who sees your posts. Maybe you just want to encourage those who are already following you. Um, I mean, we all know when we open, you know, Instagram, we're not always seeing the people that we follow. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the reality of it. So you have to kind of pay a little bit, boost your post, maybe $10, $20, a little bit can go a long way as far as, you know, the time spent boosting posts. Um, and then uh, there's, of course, no perfect recipe for social media success. The key is really to just start posting and post regularly. Um, we've all seen videos have really taken off. They're doing really well. Um, Obviously, creating a video is a lot more time intensive than a photograph, so you need to just figure out kind of where you want to put your time, what you want to do. Maybe you have, you know, a couple pre-recorded snippets that you can get from different, you know, people on your team, uh, staff members, parents, alumni. Maybe someone can just send you a little bit about why they like your organization, uh, and then you can share pre-recorded videos. Um, so start posting now. Like I said, if you haven't already, let your audience know that you've registered for Give Education. Let them know early giving is starting. You know, if that's part of your campaign strategy, um, come up with a posting plan. Sometimes, well, it's always easiest to break a big project like posting on your socials, which can be overwhelming, into small 
manageable manageable pieces uh, because it just gets so overwhelming. So um, figure out, you know, do I want to, do I have a matching grant? Do I need to do a post about this? Yes, I need to figure out how I want to kind of pre-design. Um, do we have uh, mini goals that we want to share with people? Yes, let's pre-design a couple templates for mini goals that we can just drop in the data and post. Um, so kind of coming up with like a guideline of what you find important to post um, and then the scheduling like when you want to post it is going to be really key. Um, and then, of course, I mean, if possible, figure out if you can outsource, you know, your social media project to a staff member, a volunteer, somebody who's trusted, who can help you come up with a marketing plan. Um, also, someone who can stay active during the day, responding to comments, um, re sharing or retweeting posts that other people have, sharing your organization, um, just someone who can stay active and just really keep up with the supporters during the day, let them know that they're seen, appreciated, um, stuff like that. If I could jump in just for a second, I think my most important takeaway with the social media and kind of marketing strategy is to just have a framework and then make sure everybody knows what their responsibilities are. So for example, like on our day of giving, our workflow is I pull down the names of who donates on the website. My coworker is in charge of personally calling and acknowledging that donation with the donor. And then my boss is working with me to send out thank you pictures on our social media. So basically, I guess my main takeaway that I want people to know is that going into it the day of can be a little busy. So it's good to have expectations and like kind of assignments made ahead of time just so that everybody knows what their responsibilities are going into it. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, so resources, support resources as we wrap up, just to make sure you all have um, contact details. Um, I also wanted to add little screenshots. I think uh, oftentimes people overlook that we have a really nice resource center um, that is linked in the fundraising um, toolkit. So we have, of course, support, uh, like a whole support library. How do I, you know, set up EFT, whatever have you, how do I, you know, set up a team fundraiser, everything like that is in your support library. We also have a really nice resource center. Um, we have different blog posts, we have ebooks that you can download, um, different kind of really cool little PDF guides all about fundraising. We also have a bunch of pre-recorded webinars that Mighty Cause hosts throughout the year um, that you can always watch on demand. Um, so definitely check out the resource center as well as the support library um, and then uh, give education and many cause support teams are here for you with anything that you all may have questions about. Um, and let's see, I think that that is it for me. If anyone has questions or if Carrie, Josh, you want to add anything as well. Yep, Sarah, there is a question, quick question. How does the money get to the organization or are we adding our link to come to us? Uh, let's see, how does the money get to the organization? So I believe that question is how do, how like once the donations have been made on Give Education Day on March 1st, how does the money get to the organization? Perhaps, hopefully I'm answering that, or I'm asking that question, rephrasing it a little correctly. Um, yeah, so for disbursements, they'll happen um, after the event. So if you have EFT set up, um, we disperse on the, uh, I believe it is the 10th of the month, around the 10th of the month, and around the 25th of the month. So if you've set up with for a direct deposit, um, if you have opted for a check, uh, checks go out the following month on the 10th. So anything that comes in during the giving day on the 1st will be dispersed April around April 10th. Hopefully that answered the question. Um, I, it could also be interpreted, I feel like, as um, how do you get the money? There's a donate, oh, you did, okay, great. I was just gonna say there's a donate button. Um, let me see if I can get to it just to show you. So right here we have donate and fundraise. Fundraise is for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Donate is the direct donation form. Um, so I would click donate on your page, copy and paste the URL, and that's what you want to include uh, when you're sending like emails, you know, to your supporters. 
um, saving them the step of having to come to your page and then click donate. And then that's just like one extra step. So I always encourage people to just take that step off the table. Uh, your organization page, of course, share it, highlight it, send it to ambassadors, spread the word. But when you're asking for like a direct call to donate, make sure you're sharing your donation form link. And Sarah, also, uh, if I can take a second, this is Carrie again with Alumni Nation. <clears throat> we will be awarding hourly golden ticket prizes uh, at random to the uh, organizations that are participating. We don't have the dollar amount on that yet. We're still trying to raise additional funds from our sponsors. So that will be coming. If you have signed up, we will send you an email and let you know. Um, but the more, you know, we, we love to see the activity on that. And um, we hope that, you know, that you, as you start to get more fundraising and more activity going that day, um, I hope they'll just let people know that you are, you have the option to potentially win a golden ticket, uh, which will be additional money that will be sent to you. So we'll give you more details in terms of the cost on that, but we wanted to let you know that for sure there is, there's another upside to, to joining and to registering and encouraging other organizations that you know of in your area to register as well. Hi, this is Josh again. I would just say that um, there's a lot that you can really do to make this as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. Sarah illustrated a lot of really great things that you could do to kind of take your campaign to the next level. I would just encourage you to think about who your audience is and what their strengths are. So for us, we have a large population that is older and not necessarily on social media as much. And so that's where we use a direct mail postcard to let people know about our day of giving. So just kind of be thinking about who your audience is and what's the best way to reach them and engage with them on something like this. Lots of great suggestions. Um, let's see, what else do we have coming through? And again, if you would like the, um, I, I know I'm seeing a lot of people pop up wanting the templates. Thank you so much. I will get your email addresses and I will share it with you on Canva. Again, you'll want to customize it to your school's colors, your organization's colors. Um, you can use the stock photos. You can change the photos, but it's at least started for you. Um, and I will thank you for those of you who are dropping your emails and I will get that taken care of right away. If you can let me know if for some reason you didn't get it, I'm going to drop my email address into um, the chat room right now. If for any reason um, it doesn't work or you're like, hey, Carrie forgot about me, please just send me an email and we'll make sure to get it to you. That sounds good. Um, if anyone else has questions, um, let us know. It's a lot to digest. <laughs> um, righty. I don't think there's anything else coming through. Carrie, are you grabbing all these emails? I am. I'm literally just dropping them in <clears throat> my notes right now. So thank you very much. I will follow up with you guys right as soon as we get off this call. All um, there was so one more question that popped up. Oh, there oh, got it. That's easy. Never mind. We're good. This template is popular. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, all right. So I don't think any other new um, campaign kind of questions are coming through. So I'll give you a second to just finish collecting the emails, Carrie. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your day to spend with us. We're super excited for Give Education this year. It's going to be a really good year. Um, and like Carrie said, if you know any other schools, organizations who are interested in participating, uh, the registration deadline is February 15th. So spread the word, send them a link, um, and we'll see you all soon in uh, March. Thank you. Hey, bye, everyone.